there's two scenarios that I want to talk about that I still to this day find very confusing and still somewhat worrying because I ultimately don't know the truth behind them but I do have one striking thought uh, which is not definitely not a good one but now with Cecilia one of the ways in which she used to create uh, in which she used to communicate uh, with the members in her group and the people who knew the members in her group she created fake identities now these people or these fake identities this part of the whole scenario or whatever you would like to call it whole tactic um it was it's not relating to her supposed did these are supposed to be and they were portrayed to be real physical people who were also from the occult most of which were also supposedly trying to escape from the occult now none of us had ever met any of these fake people nor were any of us aware that these people were fake altogether because each fake fake person or fake identity had a name had a way of talking had a face for that matter because there was always a photograph for each one uh, they had a job description a personality description they had full rounded characters to every single degree that you can think of um everything was completely thought out in intense detail um as soon as i was introduced into knowing cecilia there was already this whole concept of fake identities the first one being a woman named andrea but i will get to fake identities later on so i'm not going to talk too much about andrea but this basically started right in the beginning but what i want to stress or overly emphasize is none of us knew these people did not actually legitimately exist and none of us had actually met these people what it all boiled down to is that cecilia had multiple cell phones and even more sim cards which obviously then carried uh, different phone numbers for each one and when cecilia wanted to portray or convey a message to someone she would just use the relevant phone number and you know pretend that she was that person she would do this when she wanted to send a message to a member of the group that was not currently with her or she would simply just go to the bathroom because she was always in the bathroom for a very lengthy period of time so i would even receive messages from any of these supposed people while cecilia was in the same you know 10 meter distance of me but she was in the bathroom and i couldn't see what she was doing and unfortunately being the fact that i was actually the one that was roped into uh having bought her multiple cell phones with multiple phone numbers for reasons that sounded logical um none of which i obviously knew the truth behind but again that will be covered in another topic what i want to specifically talk about in this one in, in these notes now is the woman or the supposed woman named lizette now lizette was the second person that came to light after knowing cecilia Lizette was supposedly trying to come from, you know, come out of the occult to escape from them. In first being introduced to Lizette, or digitally rather introduced to Lizette, Lizette was always trying to attack Cecilia, to try and kill her. And uh, then after a period of a few months, Lizette changed her mind and she wanted to also escape from the occult and she turned to Cecilia for help. And then Cecilia turned to the members in her group to then help Lizette. But now, at this point, 
the members in the group was me and Rhea. Um, I do not recall uh, up until that stage other, other people had left who were actually part of Rhea's ministry team who did also help. But at that point in time, it was primarily me and Rhea and Marinda hadn't even been introduced into the group yet. So Lizette would communicate mostly with me and Rhea and then eventually as Marinda was introduced to the group, she would then communicate with Marinda as well. But now, with the communication between these fake people and any actual real person, like I said, it was only text messages. There was no any form of physical contact. There was not so much as even a phone call, so you could not even hear this person's voice. But Lizette was different. And this is what strikes me and still confuses me a lot. Lizette was very... I received countless messages from Lizette on an almost daily basis. And uh, there was one scenario where I was at home and as, you, every, as every communication with Lizette would go, it would be a text message. But on this one particular day, I'd gotten into the shower and when I got out, I saw I actually had a missed phone call from Lizette. And then I saw that there was a text message after as well. Now, in that moment, I didn't know whether I should phone her back or not because Cecilia had told us that if we communicate or when we communicate with anyone from the occult who are trying to leave, we put their lives at risk and the occult could then just kill them there and then on the spot. So if I had to then phone Lizette back, not knowing if it was safe enough for her to talk because she could potentially be you know, around anyone in the occult there and they would have known what was going on and her life would be at risk. So I chose not to phone her back and rather responded in a text message. I did still think for weeks after that that it was very strange that Lizette actually phoned, but I was also somewhat intrigued. Actually, I was highly intrigued because I would be the first person who would have actually spoken on the phone to one of these other people that were trying to leave the occult. It wasn't just text messages anymore. And then another scenario arose very soon afterwards with Lizette, which became even more striking and even more confusing. Confusing back then, no, but confusing after leaving Cecilia and now, most definitely. Now, up until that point, uh, anyone outside of Cecilia's group and basically whoever was in Rhea's ministry team, they, they were not aware of the names of these other people that were trying to leave their cult, nor were they actually aware that anyone was trying to leave their cult. We were forbidden from talking about this altogether. So the world at large around us was oblivious. They knew absolutely nothing. And to the people that knew us, they would only know that we know Cecilia and perhaps a brief overview of her supposed life. But now in this particular scenario, I had just recently, well, I just left Cecilia's house and I had gotten home. And at that stage, I lived with my parents. Up until that point, my mom had already spoken to Cecilia twice on the phone while I was actually with Cecilia, and they had lengthy conversations. Um, so my mom was very, very in tune with what Cecilia's voice sounded like. But on this one particular day, and it was the only particular day, I got home and my mom... I uh, was re relating to me that she received a phone call from this woman and they had this long discussion and she related to me that it was a friend of Cecilia's who was also trying to leave the occult and this woman was trying to help my mom with something in particular. Now up until this point my mom had never heard the name Lizette before nor was I 
going to ever even mention Lizette's name because you know there's astrals all around me not just Cecilia's supposed DID parts but occult astrals as well as far as I was away at that point so I would not dare mention Lizette's name uh, you know for that reason uh, aside from being forbidden and out of extreme curiosity I couldn't help but ask my mom did this woman give you a name? And my mom said, yes, her name was Lizette. My jaw dropped. I did know, not know what to say. My mom had never heard this name. She was, not, she was not even aware of the existence of this person. And, and my mom and this, this woman had a very long conversation on the phone as well. My mom said that Lizette's voice was very different to Cecilia's voice. I still cross-questioned asking... I still cross-questioned asking, you know, if it was somewhat similar to Cecilia's voice. At that point, not thinking, actually, you know, it might have been Cecilia trying to fool my mom, but just curious to know what her voice sounded like. I was curious in all aspects to know these people other than just through text messages. Since we had we had formed somewhat of a, a friendship or a relationship or whatever you would want to call it for quite a long period of time through text messages. Um, my mom said her voice was very different to Cecilia's. The way in which she spoke, the words she used, everything was completely different. I was dumbstruck. Um, there was no other word for it. But I had no reason to not believe that it wasn't Lizette. This, unfortunately, also even more firmly rooted the supposed fact that there were these actual people that were trying to leave the occult. That these people that Cecilia was talking about was actually they were actually really real. I had related this scenario to Cecilia after it happened. She just gave a light-hearted response. She sounded unmoved, um, not surprised. Um, there wasn't actually much to her response at all. As far as I remember, she actually changed the topic soon after. It wasn't a big deal to her. There was nothing I can actually say right now that would make me question her response. It didn't seem confusing in any point. And of course, Rhea also then found out about this phone call, which obviously then also more firmly rooted the supposed fact that these people really existed. Not that any of us were actually questioning if these people existed or not, but either way, it would have. You know, it would have rooted this supposed fact in us. But now, after months and years of this going on with Lizette, never again having a phone call from her, but still continuous text messages, and then extra supposed people leaving the occult, sending messages to each of us, this just, it carried on. But none of these other people, uh, other than Lizette, had actually phoned anyone else in the group or any other person who knew anyone in Cecilia's group. It was Lizette and Lizette alone who did this. So, after having left Cecilia and looking back even now, I can easily sway off that all these people... All these fake people were fake. Um, it's easy. I mean, there was multiple phones and multiple phone numbers found in Cecilia's possession. And up until just leaving Cecilia, she also started mixing the numbers and sending wrong messages to wrong, you know, pretending to be the wrong person, which then, of course, started solidifying the questions and answers in my mind. I mean, she would send me a message pretending to be her 
her grandmother, but it was from her father's number. Or she'd be sending a message from Anya's phone number. But it was all threatening, and it was actually her father. It was very mixed and matched. She couldn't keep up with whose number belonged to who anymore. There were too many fake people. I mean, okay, I will cover that in another topic. But going back to Lizette. Now, we know who Cecilia's father is. We know who her real mother is. Uh, I even have their phone numbers, which are different to the, the messages that I used to receive messages from them on. But Lizette always hung in the air as a question because every other person you can sway off to just being fake because it was just text messages, just information passed to you through Cecilia or through text messages where you could not hear a person's voice or see a person's face uh, while they are talking to you. It's easy to fool someone to pretend to be someone else using that method. But how do you explain Lizette? If I had have answered that phone call uh, that day that Lizette phoned me, undoubt undoubtedly I would have known it was Cecilia or not. I would have identified the person straight away if I had have obviously known the person, even if it was just one encounter with him. So why would I receive a phone call when there was that kind of risk in being exposed? I mean, my mother would have been an easier target to fool because she had only heard Cecilia's voice. So, you know, the the bigger question hangs on, okay, Lizette phoned. There was a voice that was heard. Alongside with mannerisms and conversation, a mother that I could have been, that could have been easily fooled, um, where it could have been someone else um, other than Cecilia. Or at that point, well, put it this way, there was less of a risk. But she still received a phone call. Question mark. And then I received a phone call, although I missed the call. Um, I was a much higher risk for the whole thing being exposed. But either way, question mark. There was a voice at the end of this phone call that belonged to someone that none of us had ever met. And at that time point, the people that were that were sentenced in high court for the Krugerstorp killers case, those people were not in this scenario at that time point. It was merely only Marinda and LaRue, Marcel and Ria that had been in the picture pretty much when Lizette was still communicating with everyone. Now I knew Miranda's voice, obviously I knew Ria's voice and definitely knew Cecilia's voice. LaRue and Marcel were much too young at that time point. So who was this other person? I knew pretty much everyone that was in Cecilia's life. I had met various other people, um, her other outside friends, places she would go to. I, I knew a lot of people. I knew possibly 99.9% .9 of everyone she knew. But obviously not, because there was this one voice. Who was that voice? That question still hangs in my mind still today. Because the person with that voice was not on trial. That person with the voice, with that voice, was not sentenced. Who was it? You know, who was in this conspiracy? And I do have a regret that I never answered that phone call. I mean, it was a, obviously an accident, um, a scenario I could not have avoided. I got into the shower. How would I know that I was going to get a phone call? But... I still regret that I never got to answer the phone because I still want to know who that person was. Because there is, undoubtedly in my mind, another person out there that Cecilia used for Lizette's voice. 